Hi, I'm Chris from DinoJet. In this video, I'm going to describe the auto-tune process for the DinoJet Power Vision for Harley-Davidson models. I'm going to explain the differences between Auto-Tune Basic and Auto-Tune Pro, and I'm going to give an in-depth description and demonstration of the entire process. With the run-stop switch turned on and the bike's key turned on, we'll go into Program Vehicle from the main menu of the Power Vision, and we'll select Auto-Tune. Next, we'll hit Enable Auto-Tune. It's now going to prompt us and ask us which tune in our custom tune slots we would like to auto-tune. Step two, it will ask us which auto-tune method we prefer. Our options here are auto-tune basic and auto-tune pro. Auto-tune pro utilizes the wideband O2 sensors and can only be used with the DinoJet auto-tune hardware accessory. Auto-tune basic utilizes the stock O2 sensors of the vehicle. When we select Auto-Tune Pro, this will apply a Power Vision value file to the tune that's in the ECM currently. This value file will set the complete commanded air fuel ratio table to 13.0. It also temporarily will disable acceleration enrichment, deceleration enleanment, power enrichment, adaptive control, and engine idle temperature management systems. Auto-Tune Basic will apply a power vision value file that sets the base fuel table to 14.6 to 1, and that's across all RPMs, all MAP and throttle ranges. It does this because that is the only effective range of the stock O2 sensor. Auto-Tune Basic also will temporarily disable acceleration enrichment, deceleration enleanment, power enrichment, adaptive control, and engine idle temperature management. We also are going to retard the timing four degrees while in Auto-Tune Basic to help reduce engine heat. For this example, we'll select Auto-Tune Pro. This will modify the tune in the ECM for auto-tuning. So we'll hit continue to flash the ECM. After the auto-tune enabling flash is completed, the screen will prompt you to turn the key off for 10 seconds. After the 10 seconds has elapsed, we can start the bike back up. We'll go back into the auto-tune screen and we'll go into the data log screen while we ride the bike. While we're in the green data logging screen, Auto-Tune will start learning and recording the air fuel ratio that is being reported. You do not need to start log while in the data log screen to begin learning. The entire time you are in the green screen, you are learning. Selecting log start simply creates a log file that you can export and or use with the log tuner software. When you see the green screen, that means the learning process is active and you're on your way to perfecting the tune. At the top of the green screen, I can see log mode is currently set to hits and that will display what cells of the VE table we have recorded usable information. As we ride the bike, our current cell will be highlighted and any cells that we drive through and get usable data from will increase in a value. Basically, we want to ride the bike and fill the hits table with as many hits as we can to collect as much data as possible. Auto-Tune Data Logger monitors various operating conditions to ensure you're ready to start auto-tuning and whether or not you're in a state that will allow learning. A large message will overlay the screen to indicate the condition that's currently preventing the learning. Here you can find a list of all of the conditions that could keep auto-tune from learning and an explanation for each one. From the data log screen, if we hit mode one time, 
the mode will change to VE front. And this is going to show me my current volumetric efficiency for the front cylinder. If I hit mode again, it will go to VE rear. Hitting mode again, I can see LVEF. LVEF stands for Learned Volumetric Efficiency for the Front Cylinder. As you populate more hits, this table will fill in with a new VE value. Hitting mode again, we have Learned VE for the Rear Cylinder. Hitting mode again get, brings us to LCORF, and that is Learned Correction for the Front Cylinder. And that is a percentage of the current VE that will change, that will be added or subtracted. If we hit mode again, we can see the learned correction for the rear cylinder, LCORR. Hitting mode again brings us to the RT screen, real time. And this is exactly like the hit screen, except it's zoomed in. on the current running cell. But be careful focusing on this screen while driving on the road. Hitting mode again brings us back to our original hit screen. After we have filled the hit screen and learned as much data as desired, we'll hit exit. After collecting all of this air fuel ratio data during this testing, this data needs to be saved in a calibration for reflashing the VE corrections to the ECM. This is done by clicking Export Learned. This will apply all learned values to the tune and save it to one of the custom tune slots. We'll hit Continue and select a slot to save the new tune. If we wish to flash that new tune and continue auto-tuning, we can disable auto-tune and re-enable auto-tune while choosing that new tune as the starting point. If we do not want to continue auto-tuning, if we are finished, we simply need to flash the tune from the custom tune slot. Our maximum allowable volumetric efficiency in any given VE cell is 127.5. When we export learned, if any of these values are to exceed 127.5, the screen will prompt you to cap or scale the value. If we choose scale, the Power Vision will automatically increase the engine displacement factor and also decrease all volumetric efficiency cells by the same percentage. If we choose cap, no changes will be made to the engine displacement factor and we will simply cap off the exceeding VE cell at 127.5. So whenever we export learned from the auto-tune menu and we save a new tune into one of the custom tune slots, all of the parameters that were set up for auto-tune are returned to their original setting. This means all of the peripheral fuel adjustments like power enrichment and acceleration enrichment that were currently disabled for the purpose of auto-tuning, those settings are now re-enabled. The commanded air fuel table is back to its original setting before we enabled auto-tune. If we're to return the bike to normal use at this point, we need to be sure to flash that new tune from the custom tune slot into the ECU. Otherwise, if we leave the bike in auto-tune learn mode, all of those peripheral fuel adjustments will still be disabled and the commanded air fuel table will still be set up for auto-tune learning mode.